This right here is a much nicer view. Oh, look at that. Hey everybody, Real Estate Ninja here. I hope you're doing well as we adjust the camera. I wanna to talk today about the media pushing a special loan product. It's gonna hurt a lot of people. And I'm gonna to explain to you why they are. But this is no different than what happened back in 2006, 2007, as the velocity of real estate collapsed. Investors were wondering what was going on and the media was pushing some dangerous things, okay? So this story is out of CBS News. Now I gotta show you the headline because I have to show you something very important here. See how big the headline is right here. It's entitled, How to Use a HELOC to Purchase a Second Home. Then you see the size of the font right here, CBS News. This wording's a little smaller. This is what it says. We may receive commissions from some links to products on this page. Promotions are subject to availability in retailer terms. By law, when it comes to finance and real estate, uh, the truth can't be in the smallest font. I don't know if you know that, but it's true. Uh, there are laws that were passed when it comes to money and real estate that your disclaimers have to be a certain size font. They cannot be the smallest font. Let's read this story and we're gonna talk about it and how dangerous this is. And I'm about to shift my focus on finance over the next three to four months of how important it is because I've done a lot of financing in my life and there's a lot of ways of making great money. But there's a lot of ways of getting screwed in financing. It says here, in the mar if you're in the market for a second home, I mean, how many people are uh, in the market for a second home, honestly, right now. You may be considering ways to finance the purchase. Between a down payment and closing costs, you'll typically need between $8,600 and $107,000 available to purchase the average home in the United States. And the low end of that range assumes that you can purchase the home with 0% down, which is rare. That's actually not true, but I digress. Sorry, I'm gonna, I don't wanna get too far off topic. But you could, still have options even if you don't have enough cash on hand to purchase your second home. For example, the home equity from your primary residence may help bridge the gap between the money you have and the money you need to buy a second home. That's especially true in today's economic environment, one in which the average homeowner has about $299,000 in equity. It is true. We have paper millionaires all across the country that have golden handcuffs they feel excited, they're worth money until that turns. So it's already starting to turn. You're gonna see that over the next year. It's super exciting. It says, and one way to tap into your home's equity is to get the funds for a second home purchase is to use a home equity line of credit or a HELOC. But how exactly do you do that? And then it just simply goes into these links. A little calculator gets you excited. You type these links, they make money. Okay, here's the deal. The media is gr grasping at straws right now to get m make money, okay? So they're using affiliate links, things like that. Do I harm, no harm, no foul. It's, it's business, right? I understand. I own an advertising company, I get it. Here's the problem, this is what they're not telling you. HELOCs can be very dangerous. Floating rates, um, they have a rate lock, but we're talking big money if interest rates go out of control. And you know that I believe, and actually I'm curious, type one if you believe that interest rates are actually gonna go higher in the future than they are now, or type two if you think they're gonna go lower before, because that's the thing, everyone thinks they're gonna go lower, right? Because ultra low rates have been the norm since the dot-com bubble. Here's the problem. We have an imploding economy, right? Everybody's saying one, they're going higher before they go lower, right? Even if they have a little bit of a dip, they're on the way up, the trajectory, in the near to midterm is higher, right? Before an absolute collapse, then they go low. All right, so people with home equity lines of credit are going to get squeezed more and more. Let me give an example. And I've told this story before, I don't know if I've told it on this channel. In Lake Havasu, Arizona, 2006, the young ninjas walking across hot boat to hot boat, I'm not joking, I'm just barefoot, just walking, you know, silver bullet in the hand and, and walking from boat to boat, not like, partying, I'm asking, who's the boat owner? When did you buy it? And I'm curious, I'm doing a poll. Do you own it cash? I know that's gotta be super awkward for a guy to be asking that, but that's the ninja, I'm an awkward guy. And so I went from boat to boat and every single guy, and I have a way of pulling information out of people without them being offended, um, had, a, had a loan on that boat. One person, I must've stopped by 20 boats. I said, hey, I'm taking a poll because I'm an economist, shade tree economist. Um, you should see me work on a car. Uh, 
I'd say, hey, I'm taking a, a poll of the economy and I think the economy is collapsing. Do you mind answering one question and only one question? And I'll be able to prove to you that the economy is collapsing. Well, then I had the boat owner's attention and I said, do you own your boat? And they're like, no, I got a loan. All right, think about that. I'm gonna go around and I bet you every single person has a loan on their boat here. Just think about that. And they're like, oh. So I go from boat to boat, every single person, except for one. I don't know, I own the boat. I'm like, what? You've broken the challenge. You've, that's it. I'm like, every single person lined up. You're the only one that owns the boat. He had pretty stoked. His, you know, head went up, shoulders went back. I said, you don't, that's hard to believe. I'm going to be honest. He goes, no, man, I own the boat. I got the pink slip. And I go, you have no loan attached. He goes, no. And he goes, well, I mean, technically, he goes, I used a home equity line of credit to buy this. And I got, nailed it right there. That's it. So you couldn't have bought this cash. He goes, well, no, gosh, I don't have the money to buy this. This is like a $150,000 boat. And back then in 2006, 150 grand was a lot. Now you can't even get a ski. I mean, we're talking a 32 foot. No, not a 32 foot. That was a 28 foot sleek craft with dual 502s. I believe if my memory serves me right. Uh, I was really into boats. Um, it, or maybe it was a DCB. I don't know. Sorry. Put your favorite boat down. You can't even get a jet ski boat or a ski boat, a wakeboard boat, a Malibu, a ski centurion for 150 grand now. So back then was a lot of money. Those boats are now like 299, 399,000. All right. Again, why are they that much? Because of financing, right? So nobody thinks about the financing when they're signing on the dotted line and the, uh, the, the salesman that got you all pumped up and giving you the vision of all the girls in bikinis and all oh, the ice cold beer. It's going to be amazing. No, you got to think about, okay, you, you bought the boat. It was day two of ownership. Oh, your happiest day just surpassed you. Now you've got, you know, you got broken props and all this other stuff you got to deal with. And you got to deal with the financing, right? So... My, my thing, my point is, is that these equity lines, it's a hangover. You wake up and you're screwed. And that's what's happening to a lot of HELOC owners right now that have had HELOCs for like the last four years because they're paying exuberant, I mean, massively higher uh, minimum payments on that money than they were just a handful of years ago. So here you've got the mainstream media out there trying to uh, portray this great idea. Hey, why don't you buy a second house? And you're like, that's great. What are you going to do with that second house? If you're not renting it for cash flow and you think you're rich, you're going to get screwed. And going back to Havasu, you know, I was a part of that uh, market where these luxury condominiums were being built and people were buying second homes like crazy. And then I watched that uh, fall out and that collapse. And that was exciting to be a part of. Uh, because it showed you the true meaning and a reality of a real estate cycle and that there's those downtimes. I hope you're getting ready for this. Don't listen to CBS News. They're bad. Real Estate Ninja is out.